The inmates are running the asylum. Welcome to this Saturday, Sat E Day SmackDown podcast of chaos with me, Dan the Truth Late, and your Jam the Champion, and my challenger for the championship at WrestleMania 40, or WrestleMania, or the winner of the Royal Jamble 2024. You're going to need to tell us that we're live so that I know for a fact that we are. Well, we are live. We are live. Jam, it's been 52, 53 seconds in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in. We're in. You're good. You I did love good. It. Perfect. Everything's fine. Everything's well. I've got broken wrestle talk. That's what we love to see. Um, Sat, how are you? Yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sat E Day. You guys push for it. You guys were like tweeting. You guys were putting messages in the comment section. We're like, we want Sat E Day back. We want Sat E Day back. And guess what? We are back. We are live. Thank you so much for fighting so hard to get us to do this. But also thank you so much to Dwayne The Rock Johnson, to Cody Rhodes, oh, yeah. to Roman Reigns, to Seth Rollins for making SmackDown so exciting that we had to come back and do this. This feels like 2021. I used to do this from a comfort of my own house talking about wrestling. So I felt like I've gone back in time. But this time I've taken Dan with me back to the future, but only SmackDown or Saturday Day. What's up? This is it. I've just um, had to change my mic audio because al- this is this is already going wrong. It was coming out my headphones. It needed to come out of my mic that's going on. Thanks to no, Mod Jennifer for letting me know. Hopefully, you can hear oh. me fine. Yeah, the whole time I could hear you, but okay. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Look, I hope everyone can hear me. Mic, what's better? We've got. Uh, look, we're, we're figuring it out. So by doing this show with you, I've basically completed Wrestle Talk. You were the last one. You are my last get. I yeah. think if I'm not wrong, that means I own the company now. I don't know, but okay. Okay, I'm gonna check. Have you done it with Sullivan as well? Have you and Sullivan done a show together? <gasps> Reviewing the show? No, no. That's he... true. Not a review with Sullivan. No, but Goodness you, you shared a camera. Yeah. For me, I, I consider uh Quizlemania as as a thing. If I've shared a, the camera with you, which I have before, I've shared with you, you know, you know, you know, j- jamming a jar. So we've done shows yeah. together. I've seen you in real life. Yeah. We spent time together. But yeah, this is like uh Corey Graves and Wade Barrett being told to do a show together, and this is exactly <laughs> what you guys are getting. And we're gonna make it work somehow. We're gonna crack we on. Are. Everything's fine. Um, shall we dive into the show? Yeah, because because this is weird. This is two two co-hosts trying to figure out who's gonna host the show. But because you have the power, you host the show, and I just respond to you. So SmackDown, what happened, guys? If it, yeah, if I don't like what you're saying, I can boot you out. I've got the power. Oh, like this is I've got the snap playing in my head. Don't don't do that, please. please. I, I promise. Start I off won't. so well. We start off so well, guys. Okay. <laughs> oh, let's go. All right. Let's go. All let's right. crack on. Let's crack on because the the lead topic that we're dealing with overall, I thought this was a, a pretty decent episode of SmackDown. I thought. What, what did you think? I I felt like it. Yeah, they coasted on the fact they had the main event. I feel like the show was good, and you can tell they didn't put too much effort in everything they were doing. That, that's how mm. I felt like. I was watching it and drained things in pieces. I felt like it, was, I, it should have been more focused. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'm being too hypercritical. Because I'm sour because of the Bailey situation. I think the Bailey situation is what's making me feel kind of sour because it went from being a hot story. We're going to get to it because I don't want to jump. It, was, it started as a hot story, but now it's, mm. it's, it's now like in the back burner. But yeah, we're going to talk about the main event that apparently overran and most people in America didn't see the slap. Heard know. around the internet, well, allegedly. So this is the fascinating thing because, yeah, we'll I'll, I'll walk through the segment and then we'll we'll go through it and then we'll talk about the production elements of it because I do I do know what you're what you're coming at with there. But then yeah. we started the show with with Rock and Roman arriving, both of them escorted by um, security detail, uh, and then Cody and Seth both arrived at the arena on their own, mm-hmm. only to be met by General Manager Nick Aldis with security detail who said you guys as well they kind of locked them in a room <laughs> like an armed guard um didn't work though because just before the main event sequence we had nicole just go backstage to get cody and seth but finds out that they are not in the room and they have somehow found the cluedo exit from that room yeah. and slip security yeah it was a kind of big time entrance wasn't it the the yeah. like arriving at the arena yeah, it was because it, you had The Rock come out. He had his cowboy hat. He had the same outfit he had during his uh, infamous video that he did on mm. X, formerly known as Twitter. Everyone's talking about that. I love yeah. how The Rock has been saying everything with intense conviction. Everything coming out of his mouth, it just it hits hard. And then you see Roman Reigns already there with Paul Heyman, and then, you know they got a the security detail with them. And then you see Cody there, and then you see Seth's a bit ahead. 
you know, and they're like coming in like two buddies walking in. <laughs> they're gonna take over SmackDown, the American visionary. And Nick Oldie's like, eh, eh, eh. you guys got, you know, babysitters too. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, I should say as well, by the way, get in your auto chats. It's a, uh, that this is the part that I haven't done yet. It's wrestletalk.com forward slash support. Is that the right? the right thing the mods will put the link in the chat they, they know what they're doing but get your ultra chats in for what you think of the main event segment as we go through it because when the bloodline eventually did manage to get to the ring it took them ages i mean roman's entrance is already nine years long then you've yes. added the rock and the rock has this whole new entrance the room goes yes. dark lightning appearing all over the place and uh, and he's illuminated from the back and it's all very it's like black adam didn't work so he's gonna make it happen <laughs> like yes, it's you know yes, and it was it yes. was i have to say it was sick. It was so cool. Did you think? Oh, I loved it. Listen, The Rock, yeah, I'm going to be biased, right? I, I'm so happy we bullied The Rock from being... I, I was called in the last 10 years, Dwayne Johnson playing the part of The Rock. Now right. getting The Real Rock. The Rock that I grew up with. Not like, hi guys, we're live. We are now trending. You say... Mm. But you say wipe, but wipe, but wipe. No, we've got The Rock actually dialed <laughs> in, you know you know bringing in material that feels authentic because it felt like the last few times it, it came to the point where when he had a promo with Jinder Mahal I was more entertained by Jinder than I was by The Rock and, and it was blasphemous to say that but it felt like The Rock was just you know I'm coming to do this tour you know I'm now you know the, the new uh, you know a new shareholder of TKO or whatever but since the fans rejected the idea of Roman versus The Rock. We, we've awoken the sleeping giant, and I, I'm enjoying what we've been getting. I'd rather see this Rock than the Rock we would have got had he faced Roman Reigns this year. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think that there's something about, even when he's doing the promos on Twitter or X, like whether or not... So I, the first one was like 20 minutes long, and I saw it, and I was like, oh, I ain't watching that. That's That's a long time for me to be staring at my phone. But then you hear all the responses and the, the reactions to it. And this, this one that came out, the 16 minute one just now where he <laughs> tells Pharaoh to F off, which yes. like, you know, he's clearly having such a good time leaning into this character. My one criticism, my one mm -hmm. criticism is, I wish we had the Hollywood rock theme. Do you know what I mean? The slow one, the like arrogant one from 2003. I love that theme. There's a saying that goes, uh, the monkey's poor. So let's just yep. say it did happen. Death Rebels remix of The Rock's <laughs> theme. You know what I mean? I'm with you. My mind. I, yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I'm, I have always been like a Death Rebel apologist to a degree. I feel like when they hit good, they do really good. But it, it's too much middling theme songs in between that I've stopped supporting them because I feel like, for example, EO Sky's theme was the first theme they ever did in NXT. And for me, it's like the gold standard because before um, Death Rebel figured out the lazy cheat sheet, which they do for all their mm. wrestling theme songs. I want to use uh, Tiffany Stratton's theme as an example. Kind of sounds like mm. Kabuki Warrior-esque in the middle in some points. There's some songs that they borrow a lot from and you're like, you're just being lazy. You just put in, yeah. okay, put the choral music there, put a trap beat there, put the same key changes, put the same rap on all the songs. The song, the rapper that does Carmelo Hayes' song did Apollo Crews' song, you know, they like, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, they become lazy. But The Rock's Hollywood theme, yes. That is one of my favorite theme of all time. So yeah. I would love for it to come back, but I would love Jim Johnston to do it. If, if they did like right. a corporate, this new TKO corporate uh, midlife crisis rock, I would, I would like Jim Johnston to be involved. But I've had a theory that Triple H is the one that doesn't like Jim Johnston. And we will talk about that some other time about oh, my really? theory of why. Stem from 2000. Remember Triple H had like 10,000 theme songs in the wintertime? And then he... Yeah, next I mean, I he loved had... my time. That was like my favorite one. Then, yeah, he, he didn't like my time that much. Triple H felt like I need something edgier. No, he, right. he, he felt like I outgrew it. This is a side tab. We'll, we'll get back to it one day. Um, it's Dan's <laughs> first time hosting the show, and we're going to be sitting here talking about Jim Johnson. In my theory, it, it goes by NXT, CFOs, because Triple H yeah. CFOs. We'll talk about some other time. Back to the I was show. gonna say, like they give us, they give you and me a podcast. We're gonna be here till Monday. I don't know what you they would be. <laughs> you would be, dude. We'll, we'll do a side show and then we'll we'll talk about it. Yes, quick, yeah. quickly wrap it up here. Triple H told Vince, let the wrestlers from NXT keep the CFOs theme. Hence, phasing mm. out Jim Johnston. So we'll talk about this. Inter time. That is, an, I mean, I, that is definitely a side show we need to talk about at some point. Yes, yes back to the ring where the uh, finally after about what an hour. The Bloodline and The Rock get into the ring and the crowd are hot. 
and they are really milking the whole thing with the proxemics of the way they're standing. You've got the bloodline and then the rock just a little bit removed. A lot of the sort of over his shoulder shots kind of thing. They're really, it's all that media study stuff that I absolutely love to read too same, far same. into. Yeah. I'm a film um, student, and then, oh, you know. There it is. Film so the Roman, Roman grabs the mic and says, greatness stands before you. And he reaches out to clasp hands with the rock and says, acknowledge us and i went oh hello that's a little different i enjoyed that that felt like fun um but he didn't get time to say too much more because enter cody rose's theme except he's not coming down from the ramp he's in the middle of the crowd um and i felt personally they sort of yeah. messed this production up a little bit because uh, area cody's in, one, yeah yeah cody's in the crowd seth is also in the crowd on the other side but cody's being the baby face good guy signing things you can't really see him because his suit blends in with the colors of the stairs um <laughs> And then they they go for the woe moment, but they mess up the zoom out and all of this stuff. It was a bit of a a bit of a cluster f. Um, so yeah, they then cut to commercial. I think there was some timing issues throughout the show. To be completely honest with you, there was. because by the time we get back, they're getting into the ring, and this is where the show begins proper. Um, the crowd starts singing Rollins' song entirely unprompted. This goes to show that this this whole four are over with the crowd. I actually thought not to get ahead of myself. This was an incredible segment for Seth in particular. Um, but Cody says that he's heard all of The Rock's pitches and then asks, does The Rock have the authority to make these calls? Because last week he acknowledged Roman as the tribal chief. So who gives him the authority to make all of these matches? Cody says nice. it's time yeah. to give their answer. But The Rock cut him off and tells him to shut their mouths and he's going to drop some truth on their punk asses. And I was living because like instantly there's a massive amount of tension. Yeah, um, I like the fact. Um, well, actually, let's talk about the fact. Four long-winded entrance guys, yeah? Two, four guys. <laughs> so I like the fact that the Cody Rhodes entrance was kind of like the callback to the shield for Seth Rollins when he came out with him. The part where they messed up, I think the camera knew the theft was in the audience somewhere. And then when, when they were doing the wall moment, like you said, they kind of panned upwards and there was nothing yeah. to pan up to. And then they kind of awkwardly zoomed out. And I was like, ooh, I'm not saying that I, 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 I miss Kevin Dunn, which I never do. But, you know, they, they still, <laughs> I'll never say that. I'm just saying, ooh, hmm, you guys mm. can do better. Okay, you guys can do yeah. better. But in terms of the actual, um, I like the fact that The Rock was a baby face, kind of like a baby face in Dallas, Texas, super over. Because the last few times we've seen The Rock, he had mixed reaction. But I feel like with the lightning, you know, presentation, with him fully embracing being healed, by the time we get to WrestleMania, you know, people are gonna love him again. They already do, I mean, yeah. This is the thing, is it's just entertaining, isn't it? Like it's, it's, it's been stale for a while, even if I always get a pop when I hear The Rock's theme, I think The Rock is good at what he does, but this, is so good and he's clearly enjoying himself so much that you as a fan can't help but buy into it what i did love is the fact that they were buying into it it's not like let's cheer the anti-hero because we're going against what wwe wants to do they're having a good time i saw a shot a few weeks ago of, of like thunderous boos raining down but everyone in the audience has a smile on their face they're really yeah. enjoying booing the rock and i feel like that's that's what you're after isn't it oh yeah because the, the if it was 10 years ago i feel like a character of cody rhodes would have been booed. That's why people mm. keep thinking, they keep, they keep likening um, Cody Rhodes' super baby face like a John Cena-esque, Hulk Hogan-esque mm. kind of, I'm a slap hands, kiss baby's forehead, sign your autograph, you know, be your best man for your wedding. But I think because how authentic Cody comes across, you can't boo him. I mean, if you do think about booing him, you hear him cut a promo, you change your mind. I don't think about yeah. booing him. <laughs> I've loved him since I mean, I've I've been following Chris since the age of 19 since OVW. I used to be that nerd go on the OVW website to see who's who's wrestling. I'm like, oh, you know, Dustin Runnels brother's day, you know, you know, you yeah. know, Dustin Rose's son is there. He was Cody Runnels in, in OVW. He used to team up with Sean Spears. I know weird stuff like that. But yeah, I've been mm. following his career and you know he, he's very authentic, and I'm glad that the fans are. Properly, properly aligned with the heels and the baby face, as in you boo the heels and you cheer the baby face. And Seth Rollins, I see someone in there. Uh, we've got one ultra chat asking about um, Seth Rollins. Why is he involved in this match? Which we'll get to. But I'm happy that Seth Rollins is having his moment as well because he's been a, a standard bearer, a, a flag bearer for the company, good or bad. He's been in a, in a lot of Twitter beefs for the company. So I'm happy for him to have this moment. This feels like the state of the company is on the line and these four men are fighting for the for, for the power of WWE. Yeah. I think we'll get to like when we get when we get to that part, we'll I personally will really put over Seth because as I said, I think this is sort of his best moment. But 
when the four of them are sort of standing in the ring, mm. for the first time in this whole thing, really, it has felt like all four of them are top. Do you know what I mean? Like every single person is someone that you actively care about. And I think they all held their own in various different ways. I'm the same as you. I'm a massive Cody Mark. Like I've been a big Cody fan for years. And I think part of the, I think we're in an interesting era of the world where people are so looking for a little bit of earnestness, a little bit of like good and authenticity. And, you know, because Cody is someone who was the prodigal son who went away and revolutionized the industry and came back, he can get away with being the blue eyed baby face. I think personally, um, which is what makes it so much easier for The Rock to get in and say things like, he acknowledged Roman because it's what family does. And he reiterates the stakes that if on night one, Cody and Seth beat the bloodline, they will be free of them, free to finish the story and the dream of Cody's dad. But before he can go any further, the crowd starts chanting diarrhea, forcing me to try and figure out how to spell diarrhea when I was writing it down, which I resent. And Seth <laughs> is living. What did you think of the whole diarrhea Dwayne thing? Oh, um, I, un I understood what Seth Rollins was trying to achieve. It was spoofing The Rock's promo style. But mm. I think someone like Seth, who is already a polarizing figure, how he dresses, how he acts, you know, the Joker-esque aspect of his character, the loud clothing. So there's certain people that, that want to dunk on him. They're, they're, so I feel like for the haters, he gave ammunition with that promo. Because it's kind of like, oh, this is what you come up with. You have a few days in diarrhea, Dwayne, and it, and it got over, you know, you know, regardless mm. of, of what people think it got over. Uh, I understood what he's trying to do. I wasn't 100% a fan, but I can never, ever hate on someone for trying to do new things or trying to, trying to be witty. You know, it's better mm. to swing and a miss. They don't swing at all. Better uh, sorry than safe. <laughs> 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 I don't think that's the the phrase. But <laughs> no, no, better safe than sorry. No, I'm better, better sorry than safe. So I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I tr I tried. Okay, I tried. Next time I think yeah. about it, you know, like I, you say, I wish I, I tried a Daria Dwayne thing on Monday. Maybe it would have mm. gone over. He tried it, it and you know, it's it, a mixed bag. <laughs> it's interesting because I didn't, I didn't get it at all. It didn't work for me on the show. And I think when what I was saying on the Raw review was basically. Mm -hmm. It was, it was like, if the intention was for it to be a parody of The Rock, I don't think it was delivered that well. In no. hindsight, listening to it and seeing how it's all worked down, it's it's worked. They, the 13,000 people in an arena were chanting it. So it's worked. So it, like, I'll let you have it kind of thing. But yeah, in that moment, it didn't it didn't land for me. Mm. Not everything has to, I suppose. And, and clearly it's working for the crowd because they all chanted diarrhea for a while. Like he left it happening. Um, when The Rock eventually does get to continue, um, he says, when the bloodline wins, it's bloodline rules. Anything goes, he says he'll do everything in his power to make sure that you don't walk out WWE champion. And he's pointing directly at Cody. This is obviously something that we had a few weeks ago. The question was like, is he pointing at Roman? Is it the camera work? All of that stuff is Rock going to betray Roman. Um, in this instance, he was very much saying, you, Cody, will not win the WWE championship. But before he can fully continue... Seth cuts Rock off, screams at him to shut up for once, and the crowd pops, and so do I. Um, and this is where we get into Seth's big moment kind of thing. He says that the future of the industry is on the line, that uh, he, calls the, he calls Rock Mr. Midlife Crisis, which gets a proper, like, whoa, from the crowd, and is a much better name than Diarrhea Dwayne. Well played on that part for me. Um, Seth's glasses come off. To your point, Seth's character is someone who I know. I love his style. I love the the fashion of it. It's very like goes all the way back to like Adrian Street and Gorgeous George and all that kind of old school wrestling stuff. The swagger of it all. But here he is, sort of getting serious. The glasses come off. He gets in the Rock's face, and he this incredible line comes out where he says, "You've had your time. You damn sure can't have ours." And yeah. I paused the show because <laughs> I was like, "Oh, that's a good line." I wonder if that was a line he was going to use on CM Punk. He's like, okay, Punk ain't here. Oh, this is Evergreen. So I'm going to use this on Dwayne as well. You had your time. This is our time. Because that is like the crux. Because people are trying to figure out why is Seth Rollins involved in this? Because he sees himself in Cody in a way like he spent the past year flying the flag for the company, being the unofficial face and then not getting rewarded for it. He's like, I've been in that situation before. Yeah, I don't like you. you've beaten me like three times, but you know what? The only way things can change around here, I got this belt because the other guy wouldn't defend his title a lot. It wouldn't give me the rematch from the Rumble. So hence I got this belt now. Um, 
if I want change, like I claim I do, I need to help this guy. So I, I understood where Seth Rollins was coming from. In a weird way, it's kind of funny they, they, they didn't go with Seth versus The Rock for the world title. I don't know, maybe mm. the be believability factor of it, I don't know. I'm glad for Drew. I'm happy the rightful person's facing um Seth. But um, in terms of Seth Rollins having his big moment, he needed it. Because up until probably this promo, it's kind of like, what are you doing there? Like, what, mm. it's got nothing to do with you. You've got your own storyline to deal with. Even Drew McIntyre is saying, what, yeah. what are you doing? And it, it felt great that the Seth reiterated um, his his reasonings, his, his, his character evolution, because we've seen the character Seth Rollins grow before our very eyes. He preached that he's a revolutionary. He preached he's a person of change. He preached he's the guy that you turn to when you need, and he's actually being that guy there. So I like seeing the, the evolution of Seth Rollins character not a lot of people get it unfortunately because it's too nuanced for me he's like a millennial man, um, Randy Macho Man Savage that mm. is what you're going to get he's very lavish he's great in the ring uh, you know his promos when he's motivated when he really wants to cut a great promo he can because most of the promos are, are, are you know they're okay but when he wants to cut a very passionate promo he can do it and I feel like he did it in the show I agree with you completely. And I think there's something so interesting about who it is that brings it out in him, right? With with yeah. the Seth stuff, with, oh, sorry, with the Punk stuff, with the Drew stuff, and here with the Rock mm. stuff. There is an argument, I feel like, and we made it on Raw, we kind of talked about it. I was like, why isn't this Jay? Like, Cody and Jay were tag team champions this year. Surely Jay's involvement in this tag match is kind of more makes sense in the storyline wise than than a Seth when Seth has his own stuff with Drew which I'm I'm so into the Seth and Drew stuff to be honest with you mainly because Drew is incredible but also because as I said Drew brings out such incredible stuff from Seth in this moment in this segment and then with something else that the rock says in a minute Seth kind of made a a very strong case and proved the point of why he's here I thought do you know what I mean well I, I yeah uh, in terms of what you said about Jay Uso Jay Uso is involved in the the B list or the B list bloodline storyline with Jimmy. Team, I mean, yeah, because yeah, um, J Jimmy. Unfortunately, Jimmy and Jay they they they've had this dream of wanting to wrestle each other at WrestleMania. So we have to go along with it, guys. I'm sorry. They broke up. <laughs> like, they broke up. Arguably the the second best tag team of all time to to do this. So you know. For me, New Day is number one, so I don't care what anyone says. But yeah, the Usos, they broke them up just to, to appease them. Like, all right, guys, here you go. Here's your WrestleMania match. But Jay Uso is doing really well as a babyface singles competitor. So you got some lemonade out of his lemon. Um, mm, yeah. Jimmy Uso is a good comedy heel kind of like Jerry Lawler in the 90s where you don't take him too seriously but he can be threatening once in a while it's mm. kind of unfortunate because we uh, I feel like the generation of wrestling fans today they don't really appreciate comedy heels because they think if you're a comedy heel it means you you must be like dirt you must be like c-list and mm. it's quite hard for people to believe that Jimmy Uso who's been losing a lot of matches could potentially win against Jay but then again both guys winning record recently is kind of on par so mm -hmm. it is quite even now. So yeah, I am I'm fine with Jay not being in this story. If if Jay was in this story, it would be concerning the fact that Jimmy's there. I think we're gonna yeah. get there because people have this theory that at WrestleMania, all the people that got screwed up by the bloodline are gonna band together like the Avengers. The Avengers assemble. assemble. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And and have that moment when they attack Thanos and Thanos's crew. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm into that very much. Um, I will say though, for me, it's it's uh, Usos and New Day are like a joint second to the true best tag team of all time the iconics so seth accepts um roman's uh, and rock's challenge and uh, roman sort of laughs and questions why cody's letting seth answer for him he says understand you don't get another shot it's done for you now um and this is where the rock sort of takes back over and, and he gets really tense and this is i think where i can imagine your guy standing outside of the ring being like we have like 20 seconds left of the show let's get to it because the rock steps it up a gear and starts calling seth a piece Sorry, Mod Brother Jenner. He calls him a piece of shit. And and the reason for me that like I, I stepped up was because swearing is so much more effective when you don't do it all the time. Do you know what I mean? No. It's all about yeah. using it properly here and there. Um, and I and I and I it, it's the same as that uh, Vegas press conference where the rocks, you know, cussed out Triple H, where I'm like, oh my god, this is the best thing I've ever seen. And then I watched it all over again. It's because it doesn't happen all the time, it makes it feel like you know, something terrific. Also, by the way. I'm drunk with power and I'd like to do a poll. If it's possible to do a poll, I don't know whether or not it is. But can I check a poll? Um, 
which do you think is a better nickname for Seth to carry on going forward now that he's clearly staked his claim? Diarrhea Dwayne or Mr. Midlife Crisis? I'm going to leave that up to Mod Mother Jenner. If you want to make that poll happen, find a way. Uh, anyway, so The Rock uh, says he's going to do everything in his power to make sure Cody doesn't win and that Seth's title goes away. He said he's going to make Seth's title go away because he's the director of the board, which means he's their boss. That's a really fascinating part for me. Um, if Cody doesn't win, he'll never, ever get another shot again. He says this, pointing to him and Roman, his family. Roman's grandfather looking down. The high chief looking down. Even the American dream is looking down. One of his heroes. He says Cody is the youngest of three. His sister is a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. Gets a big Texas pop. His brother is a future Hall of Famer. Gets a big Dan Layton pop. Goldust for life. Um, and he's 20 years younger because Cody was a mistake. And the crowd pops like big time the graphic shows up at the bottom of the screen and because of the way i'm working on the show and writing my notes and everything i've been checking the time and i know that we've got no time left so i'm like oh my god is this this doesn't feel like it's over it's about to cut off what's going to happen fortunately at least for uk viewers i don't know if this was the way for america cody takes a second to sort of weigh up his options figure out how he's going to respond and just sort of decide the best ways to slap the piss out of the rock's mouth um so yeah that was kind of the segment in and of itself goes off the air with a slap heard around the world and if I'm watching it live, I'm tweeting like there's no tomorrow. I'm involved in all the conversation. That's a large part. And in fact, all of these Bloodline segments are a large part of the reason that we are doing sort of impromptu Saturday uh, reviews for a little while. So I thought this was just a massively effective segment, hilariously short on time for a number of reasons that feel like their fault. And it's a fault of the booking of the show rather than because I wanted to see it. Like I didn't, I, at no point did I first run long. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, anyway, yeah. I, I, I hope in the future they do better on timing. This has been like mm. two weeks in a row where the show's been sacrificed due to the long winded nature of the show. I've been enjoying it, but it's kind of like to the detriment of everyone else on the show. Cause it's called Smackdown. It's not called, it's not called, you know, the rock and Roman <laughs> Seth and Cody show. You yeah. know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a group effort. I like the fact that Cody got his receipt. That was a receipt. Cause he got slapped in the face in the press conference. So this was, this has been meaning to happen. Cody been meaning to slap a uh, rock in the face. That's just like another added reason to do it. People pointed out to the fact that when uh, Cody slapped rock in the face, the rock kind of smirked a bit in the end. I'm loving that we're getting unhinged, rock because the rock knows that he can play up as a comedy heel and if he did that people love him even more so he has to stay menacing this is a quality in the rock we haven't seen in a while this is like 1999 mm. bloodthirsty dwayne johnson the rock that's 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 the rock i grew up with in 98 99 this is the guy that caved in mankind's head in 99 royal rumble that kind of viciousness so i'm happy to see that in him um the rock was capping because Teal, who is three years older than Cody, she even she even tweeted that out. She said, hey, I'm actually three years older. That's a lie. Uh, also, um, Amanda Huber, the widow of Brody Lee, yeah, uh, Harper, slash Harper, she also tweeted that, ironically, the Rock, that's the Rock situation, because uh, GM of NXT Ava is Ava. like 20 years older than her half-siblings, because the Rock yeah. is remarried and he's got two you know, young girls, and they are mm. half siblings. They are considerably much younger than Ava, yeah. who's like 22, uh, 2023, because she was born in 2001. So that's the rock story, but that's not a mistake. Yeah. But it's just like, that's why heels do. Because I think people are like, they're trying to attack, uh, you know, Amanda Huber, like, ooh, it's like, you know what? She's watching the show, she's tweeting her opinion. People are allowed to have opinions. It's, it's a bit, it's a, it's a bit of a yeah. wild west out there. It's kind of like, that's one opinion. Shut up, Dan. I don't like your opinion, Dan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it out, Dan. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Everybody loves my opinions. I have famously the best takes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 I liked, I, I liked the, the overall segment. Um, I'm just worried about time again. Because people saying, people actually made a joke. Oh, they're trying to entice us into wanting a three-hour SmackDown because of this. Because mm. at the moment, SmackDown is a two-hour show. And you're going to need another no, 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 no. hour. No, no, I, 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 I reject this as someone who has to watch Raw every single week. I reject it wholeheartedly. <laughs> hey, I'm with you. I like the fact there's a breezy and brisk show sometimes. I don't need it to be free. I don't want it to be slug of, of, of a show. But yeah, I enjoyed mm. everyone involved. It's, it's enhanced me wanting to see this match. I was, I was in already during the press conference. But for me, I feel like they've done a great job of, of sustaining momentum and not making us lose uh, interest in the match 
So I'm I'm happy about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've just seen uh, this little chat that we've got here in the in the chat that says Dan's a United fan. He's grown up on Fergie time, so I understand that the sudden cutting off of the feed can confuse him. Uh, just to say, as a United fan for years, the best stuff happens in the final three minutes, and this SmackDown exemplified that. So uh, yeah, how about that? Um, yeah, overall, I just thought it was a really effective segment. I wonder whether or not you you do it backwards, like you you. Um, if you start the show like this, like we had last week, they started the show with it, and then that meant that everything else was sort of truncated. I get that Dwayne is sort of like the, the big boss man at this point on the board, and you kind of you, you try saying no to the rock. And when the segment's this hot, what are you going to do? But I do also feel a little bit like trim those entrances down a little bit, and that's how you save the time. I think with everybody getting like a four minute entrance, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare going forward. But as you say, ultimately, it's about trying to get you to watch the show right and the, and the rock doing his heel thing of you know the 20 years even though it's a complete fib and it's hypocritical it's his own story there's also i think le- to your point about the amanda hooper thing there's levels to people involved right so amanda hooper is team cody a thousand million percent you know the, course, every yeah. time i hear a story about what cody's done for young brody like i break a little bit but another reason that i love the guy um so like but so there's almost like a she's playing part of the story by pointing out the rock's hypocrisy like mm-hmm. brandy tweeting about pharaoh and and using her line of like who told you it was open mic night all of that stuff it's all a part of the sort of narrative and i i do feel like have more chill is my general response to some of the people on x so um yeah but there you go. I thought it was a great segment overall. Uh, the light has gone down in my apartment because the sun is going down. So I'm going to have to. There we go. Um, you use your ring light. Yeah, I have one. I'm using the light from my, uh, oh. from my screen. Look at this is some of the ultra chats, though, that we've got from you guys. So it's wrestletalk.com forward slash support. I was right. Um, you read one, I read one. Yeah, Let's I read one after you. Yes. Works for me. The last Quincy says, I don't understand why Seth is in the story apart from them wanting to give him a Mania main event as a thank you for his hard work from management. Because story wise, Jay Uso is the only one that makes sense in the spot Seth is occupying. We did kind of talk about that a second ago, but I mean, you, I think, I, especially with what we didn't speak about that, The Rock saying he's going to take away Seth's title. That adds yes. another element of to this. It is 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 showing how megalomaniacal and out the the whole character of the, of the Rock is. He's out of touch. He's megalomaniacal. He's drunk with power. He thinks he can do whatever he wants to do. Uh, in terms of Jay Uso being involved in the story, saying Seth is not involved. I'm sorry. Anytime Roman Reigns is involved in the story, Seth is in the story too. To let you know, because they are connected. They are brothers. Mm. Shield. That's Shield for life. And also the fact is. Seth is one of Roman's victims, but only his situation, his victimhood is the injustice of not getting a rematch because he's the only guy that Roman Reigns has not defeated. There's a lot of people saying in an alternative universe, it should be Seth versus Roman because Seth's the only guy that Roman couldn't beat. Seth's the only guy that got into Roman Reigns' head. Seth, remember the shield entrance? Please, guys, let's not forget Mm. that Seth is a part of the story. At one point, both guys were part, they had an uneasy alliance between them before, you know, they had a one-on-one match because a lot of things happened backstage where Vince was like, oh, uh, Seth versus Roman, a Royal Rumble. I don't care if he's on a, it's from another show, you know. Book it. Both guys' careers intertwined. The Roman Reigns, the tribal chief character, the villain origin story is Seth Rollins smacking the chair on the back of Roman Reigns. If that didn't happen, we would not have the tribal chief. So Seth Rollins, mm. is, is he's the nucleus part of this story. So do not say that, Seth, why is he part of this story? There'll be no tribal chief without betrayal. That betrayal made Roman Reigns go, I can't trust random people. I need family around me. What does acknowledge me mean? Acknowledge me means... You loyal to me? Are you loyal to me? The Sammy storyline was like a mirror to letting the outsider join your group and the outsider turned on you. He didn't turn on the outside. The outsider turned on him, which further kind of states the claim like the bloodline should be family only because family won't turn your back. I know Jimmy did it and, you know, whatever. But Seth Rollins, just to wrap it up, Seth Rollins, he he played a part into the monster Roman Reigns became. And he feels yeah. like, he, even said in his promo, I'm kind of responsible for the guy that we have today and I want to help kill the monster I helped create. Mm. Yeah, couldn't say it better myself. Yeah, I think you've got it. Um, uh, next yeah, one. you go. Yeah, then, you. yeah, I'll go next one. Yeah, this is RVBJ87 donating $45. Thank you, RVBJ. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll t- we'll take a portion of that money. We'll cut it between us. Hello, guy. <laughs> I want to give you a what if 
idea that this storyline between the new bloodline and Seth and Cody has me thinking all the way back to Seth saying Cody needs a shield. To me, Cody Roman 2 might surpass last year's match, not just because of the rock, not Roman's bloodline stipulation of anything goes, but what the rock and Roman represent a VKM error. That means Cody can do anything too. So I would not be surprised, fantasy storyline in parentheses, that as Captain America Cody has broken his shield, Seth will look into his left and have his brother Dustin, maybe an MJF, CM Punk, RKO, and a John Moxley as backup in the first McMahon-less WrestleMania and usher in the forbidden era of WWE. RVBJ, 87. Thank you for donating for donating forty five dollars, but that's a heck of a fantasy that belongs on Reddit. But yes, yeah. <laughs> imagine if that happened. Imagine if you had Dustin and, and John Moxley back there, and you know yeah. MJF. Imagine, just imagine. I mean, I mean, Dustin. I I would love for a Goldust Dustin appearance. You know, I I kind of the first thing I did after WrestleMania thirty nine was Google when Dustin's AEW contract was up to see whether or not he could be back in time for SummerSlam and turn it into a, a whole thing. Um, so I, I'd kind of love that. Moxley is never happening in a million years, but in your fantasy world, it's a wonderful idea. But I love also the the sort of meta idea of like v, Vince and, and and the Rock and Roman and this new era because Seth is a Triple H guy, Seth is a yes. Dusty guy, Cody obviously is as well, and like um, th there's something really fun to play with there, even if it's not text even if it's not something that we speak about like directly, it's subtext, it's there. It's an, it's an extra little wrinkle that we can play with. And I just love sort of the broken shield, Captain America, little imagery you've created there is uh, yes, speaking to me on a personal level. Uh, love that. Um, CD in 2493 says, ref goes down, bloodline attack, Cody and his allies, the glass shatters and Stone Cold comes and stuns Jimmy and Solo. Stare down with the rock as a callback to 17, which I believe was also in Philly. It was not. It was in Houston, Texas. I watched it last night. They brawl, Cody pins Roman, confetti, tears, pyro. Sorry, it was their match at WrestleMania 15 that was Philly. You've come back to yourself. You've made it work. Well done. Um, yes, I, I. a lot of people are after an Austin appearance. A lot of people are after an Austin appearance. Do you see it? Uh, kind of like with Seth Rollins and Roman, where The Rock goes, if Stone Cold turns up, I would not be upset. It just mm. depends on the level of backup Seth and Cody needs. If it feels like they drown out with the numbers against the odds, because there's another thing that's mentioned, the bloodline rules, anything goes, right? Anything mm. goes, right? So Stone Cold may appear. You know, Stone Cold may give a few people some stunners. There's a lot of people thinking that potentially Co um, The Rock is going to turn on Roman because anything goes, he can do whatever he wants. People see it as a WrestleMania 14 Mike Tyson moment where it's like he was, you know, covert <laughs> in the group yeah. looking to take him down from the inside. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind it, but you, you don't want to risk of overbooking because you want it to be Cody's moment. But at the same time, it would be a stamp of approval of having... Austin there, the previous man, you know, mm. help, you know, ushering in a new man to do the whole Bret Hart WrestleMania 10 moment. My WrestleMania reference is going to be, you know, wild all, doing this whole show <laughs> we've been together. And they all yeah. lift him up on the shoulder saying, yay, this is the new guy. Because I do, um, I, I give the credit to Cody for why WWE is having this boom. Because WWE was stale for the longest time. Cody was a shot in the arm they needed. It, it wasn't coincidental for me. They start selling out all their shows when Cody got back to WWE. Because up until then, everyone was fatigued with WWE. Mm -hmm. They wanted Vince gone. I wanted Vince gone. I was going to quit. The year Cody started was the year I was thinking about quit watching WWE because it was, it was just too mm -hmm. much. It just, yeah. But anyway, that's for another show for the Membergs when I'll break yeah. it down where I nearly quit watching WWE. Yeah. Back to the show. We've we'll all had a moment like chats that. later. Let's do the rest of the show. Let's get the rest of the show. What happened? Yeah, no, that's after, Why know, not? Yeah. So, because there's not like a massive amount to go through on the show, except for right at the beginning, we kick off with Logan Paul, who says uh, two years ago he wrestled his first WrestleMania right here in Dallas, and tonight they will be the first to witness history unfold. He has a little moment with the chat, the crowd, and what, and he just sort of laughs it off and says, "You guys suck," which popped me big time. Uh, he rattles off his achievements. He's, he says everything he touches turned to gold, and um, he says he kind of to your point about the business booming and it being Cody's fault for the business booming. Logan sort of takes credit for that and says. Hey, the business has been getting better and better. 
it's thanks to me, Logan Paul. I love that kind of like, you know, delusional heel situation. Uh, and he says, business is booming. WWE is in its prime, little wink face, drum roll, bit of an underwhelming reveal because there's a massive bottle of Prime printed on the center of the ring. Prime are now the new sponsors of WWE for WrestleMania and every premium live event from now on. And he brings out KSI to have a little moment with that. The crowd starts chanting USA, which is hilarious because Logan is from Ohio. Um, and they go to take a picture, but behind uh, Randy Orton's music hits and he slides into the ring from behind. Logan manages to escape an RKO, but KSI isn't so lucky. Orton drags KSI over the bottle of Prime printed in the middle of the ring, opens up other bottle of prime that KSI has brought in has a sip and then pours it all over KSI. Um, what do you think of this prime sponsorship? Do you think it's legit? Do you think it's a work? If it's legit, what are your thoughts on that? It's legit. You know what? I I I I respect Logan Paul's hustle. He's everything they wanted Austin Fury to be. <laughs> you know, when he the, the thing is with Logan Paul is. I don't think he's playing a character, and I think that's what works about him. I believe he's that braggadocious. I believe he's that full of himself. I believe he's that confident. And, you know, fair play to him. I can't hate on someone being an entrepreneur and able to nab a deal where your drink is now, like, the official, you know, the ugly bottle design is now <laughs> going to be in the middle <laughs> of Gunter's sacred right. mat. <laughs> Cody's going to finish the story on top of a bottle of Prime. Like, exactly. it's a lot. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't mind it. It's a business deal. The thing is, yeah, at the end of the day, I'm a wrestling fan. That's got nothing to do with me. Unless that Prime money is going to my pocket, I don't give a darn. Congratulations yeah. to Logan Paul, KSI. You know, you guys are a hero to, to, to children's, you know, the generation alpha of kids that's growing up that are going to be watching your content and trying to be like you guys, to emulate you guys. But I don't really give a crap. Congratulations to him. Money in his pocket. Yeah. Yay. Yay. I am... Um... I, I mean, if they're going to use that money and they can sign big talent, then who gives a crap? Yeah, I, I agree with you on that one. Also, th I think the only thing for me is I have no problem with with logos. I have a problem with ugly logos. And I feel yeah. like if you look at like a New Japan ring, that thing mm -hmm. is covered in logos. And I think it looks really cool whenever I watch a, a Wrestle Kingdom or a big show. I think it looks great. Um, and so there's there's no part of me that's bothered by that. Just if we could have the word prime rather than the big ugly bottle. That That's all I'm asking. I, I hear you, but they, they don't have a defined logo. They, that's why they're using yeah, the bottle. They have the word like, Prime and Impact Fox. Yeah. And then yeah. and the word Prime is kind of a general word. It's kind of like when, you know, Kylie Jenner wanted to uh, copyright the name Kylie and Kylie Minogue was like, uh-uh-uh, it's Kylie. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the no word man. Prime, exactly, because it's kind of like, what Prime is this? So, you know, you have, also have to remember that the Prime hydration drink is, is still a new establishing. It's not Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola mm. and Pepsi is easy. You don't need the logo, even though the logo helps with Pepsi because, you know, you like the Pepsi logo. The big circle, yeah. Yeah. So Prime is still trying to establish itself. So I understand to show which, what is a Prime? You got a 90-year-old person going to WrestleMania saying, what's a Prime? No, no, <laughs> it's a drink. You know what I'm saying? So you, you yeah. need it. And I, I like the segment. Logan Paul, for me, he, he was made for wrestling. And I yeah. feel like all the YouTubing he was doing, he was developing a, a persona which is great for wrestling. Um, I love the what situation. That was genuine. I think that's what popped you. You knew that was a genuine moment. You do the same thing. You're like, don't do that. No, 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 yeah. don't. I'm not, I'm not falling for that. And then he realized there's no way, unless he starts speaking fast and losing his, the rhythm of his promo, he has to go along with it, which he did. And KSI mm. took a great bump in the RKO. Well done, KSI. You took it like a pro. You know, he like did, someone's yeah. been a season 20 year pro. But uh, that that whole segment works because it's it's leaning more into who's Logan Paul going to face at WrestleMania? Because at the moment, people think it's going to be Randy Orton. When I did the Elimination Chamber with Luke, I said I want it to be a multi-vitamin, multi-man ladder match. Well, I mean... yes. I'm, that's kind of where we're going to go. I'm going to head into the next section because it, you, yes. to that point, this, right, this cool, segment yeah. followed on immediately <laughs> to uh, Randy Orton and Kevin Owens teaming up to take on uh, A-Town Down Under, Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. Um, and it was a, it was kind of a, a standard tag match for a while. There was a beautiful deep arm drag from Kevin Owens, which is something that I, a base, basic moves done really well is something that really gets me every single time. And the crowd were massively hot for it, which makes the production choice to have 13,000 plus people shrouded in darkness. Kind of weird. But this is that whole new production changes they're trying out along the way thing 
fine, whatever. Uh, it was all nice and standard. And then right at the end, we get the utter majesty of a pop-up RKO, which looked incredibly like effective. And shout out to Corey Graves, who is really, I think, for me, settling into his role as, as lead announcer really well. He had a line, he said, my God, you could count to 20, which was another brilliant line on this show. Um, after the match is over, Logan Paul hits a cheap shot from behind as they're celebrating. Logan goes to hit Randy with the brass knuckles, but Randy manages to reverse. Logan ducks a shot of his own, and Randy and Kevin have a kind of, whoa, hang on, you were about to hit me. You're going to be careful with that. Randy's like, sorry about that. Slips the, the uh, nooks into his trunks, and they have a little we're cool moment. And the whole gang are looking at each other from ring to, to stadium to uh, rampway. And I'm intrigued about where this is headed, because now that we know for sure that Gunther is going to have a one-on-one match, I think a multi-man ladder situation for the US title is a million miles the way to go. Um, and do you see that? Or do you maybe see a tag match situation? I don't want a tag match, uh, tag match situation. I think Triple H has conditioned us that he's very minimalist in his booking. So it's making mm-hmm. us nervous about... There's so many, there's so many I want to call stragglers on the main roster that are doing nothing. you got talented people like Ricochet, Bobby Lashley... Um, Sami Zayn at the moment, Bronson Reed, they don't have a clear direction on both shows, even though it, it, it's, it's kind of, I'm, I'm, if I was fantasy booking WrestleMania 40, I'll be accused of overbooking things. Cause in my mind, it should be uh, Legado del Fantasma versus LWO to have a blow off uh, trios tag. It should be yeah. Final Testament versus the Pride to have a blow off <laughs> trios tag match on yeah. Pick Evil Night One Night Two. I want I want to replicate matches on that one night too because there's so many people in the main roster and mm. Triple H doesn't want to do. I think we're going to get the Battle Royal again. I think you're going to get the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, unfortunately. Yeah. There'll be some people not on the main show. I, I want them to. For example, if it was up to me, Sammy would be doing a triple threat match against Drew and 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 and, and Seth. That, that, if, that, if it was me booking it. But, you know, I, I don't want to... For me, because you're a raw guy, I just want to say quickly, it's Chad Gable's story. Yeah. Or Sheamus. If Sheamus, supr- you know, randomly comes back in his match next week, it's, it's Sheamus... Or Chad, mostly Chad, because they made his daughter cry, and I'm a father, and I don't like that crap. <laughs> yes. To so yes. go back to what you're saying, a multi-man match, because it, at one point it felt like LA Knight was destined to face Logan Paul at WrestleMania, because they had a whole interaction doing the Money in the Bank, and it felt like they were saving that interaction for for a later date. And at the moment, uh, LA Knight seems to be in a blood feud with AJ Styles, and I feel like if you add in AJ, add in LA Knight, add in KO, add in Randy Orton, Logan Paul. And a town down under, maybe, and then you've got yourself a multi man ladder match mm. for the United States title. Logan doesn't have to lose it, and then you get LA Knight taking the belt down, yeah, to have his big WrestleMania moment as a reward for getting over by himself and sustaining that momentum. Mm-hmm. I, I agree. I also think uh, on the raw side, Sammy going for the Intercontinental title feels like a step down for him, whereas mm-hmm. everyone you just mentioned, the US title feels like prize for them. So I think that would be a far better use of all of those people. Um, we go over to a, a recap of Damage Control last week turning on uh, Dakota's heel turn, turning on Bailey, which I thought was brilliantly played. And Bailey sat with Kayla Braxton. Uh, she said she's hanging by a thread. She never imagined they'd get to that point. She's been questioning what's real. Were they friends or were they just using me? And Dakota used Bailey in her most vulnerable state. She says she built Damage Control with everything in her heart and she'll do everything in her soul to destroy it cut backstage to find Naomi watching this interview um, and Bianca sort of comes in and says Bailey did this to herself but Naomi feels bad. Bianca's a bit incredulous at that because you know she's like you weren't here Naomi you didn't see all of the mess Bailey created and if she had been here you'd have been put through it the same way I was. Naomi's not convinced she's seen some good in Bailey in the past and so Bianca says I guess good luck to her at Mania to say something nice and walks off. I really loved this segment. I thought this was a really interesting little bit of interplay between Naomi and Bianca and um, again, it's that whole idea of like, if, if I'm Bianca, no, I wouldn't just let Bailey off the hook because she got turned on by her friends. She made her own bed and lie in it. But if I'm Naomi, who has seen good in Bailey, I'm like, y- you feel drawn to that old friend, you know? When I was a kid, one thing I used to hate was whenever a wrestler turned babyface, all of a sudden the sins, the, their sins wiped clean. Uh, I'll use an example of how young I was. Um, Shawn Michaels turned a babyface because Diesel saved him because he was getting powerbombed by uh, Psycho Sid. This is after WrestleMania uh, 11. I told you, my WrestleMania reference is coming hard. Uh, <laughs> he, he saved him and all was forgiven, because uh, up until then, Shawn Michaels was turned on Diesel. But Diesel was like, hey, buddy, because you got powerbombed by this guy, I'm going to save you your baby face with friends again. It wasn't until Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose 
had the whole storyline where Dean Ambrose couldn't fully forgive Seth because he broke up the shield. So it wasn't a quick, you're a baby face now, cool with friends. They did the whole storyline thing. That was for me the first time WWE did a storyline where the baby face is now atoning for their sins. And it's something that Triple H really leaned into since he's become the booker. And I, I'm really enjoying it because Bailey, we uh, the Bailey that we know now, the, the role model uh, iteration of Bailey, she's done um, despicable things. So it would be quite. We love Bailey. We will instantly forgive her because she's lovable. We know the 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 Pam Martinez of, of real life. She's you know we love her. I think that that all shines through. But the Bailey character at the moment, she's she's in a state of redemption, and I understand that. Day it was it was more of a talking segment instead of her fighting, which I don't mind. I'm a kind of guy like if you're a big star, let's have the big star do a promo in the ring. If these mm -hmm. listen, I, I, I'm I'm a sicko. Have Rock, Seth, and Cody and and and, and Roman do do the whole thing backstage <laughs> and give Bailey the ring because this whole storyline has been overlooked. It started off hot. They did a lot of ratings for it, but at the moment I feel like they're kind of doing Bailey dirty. But in terms of, of the character uh, beats that we got, it was a, a great mm. one. It's great that Bianca, because a lot of people saying how comes Bailey didn't get saved last week, and I feel like by seeing um, Bianca's um, response, you understand why she yeah. didn't come out to save her last week. Naomi was, was that question. Yeah. Yeah. And Naomi, of course, she was dealing with Tiffany Stratton, you know, losing to Tiffany Stratton, mm -hmm. hence why she wasn't there either. But it also goes back to the real life relationship between Bailey and Naomi. If you follow them on social media, you know that they, they have a mutual great friend in Mercedes Monet. They were hanging out a lot together, you know, part of the crew supporting, you know, Mercedes doing her time in New Japan. Mm -hmm. So they seem to have gotten a lot more closer. So I think they're going to start sprinkling that part in there. You can almost argue that they're going to probably slot Naomi in the position had they got Sasha Banks back into yeah. the company. So, I'd be yeah. I'd be inclined to agree with that. I also think I mean I'm a fan of a backstage second personally. I re just recently rewatched Rock and Austin before Seventeen having their sort of tete a tete, which was a fully backstage interview and was absolutely iconic for it. Um, but I also think we've got four. Well, I mean, we'll get to another damage control segment in a minute. We've got four weeks worth of SmackDown left, so there's still plenty of time for them to do this story the justice I think it deserves. Um, we have Bobby Lashley versus Karrion Cross coming up next, uh, which is a big smashy fight. Um, it's all, if I'm honest with you, maybe this is just yeah. me, or maybe I just was not paying attention. It was a bit dull. It was quite rote. Um, and then AOP interfered, which led to the Street Profits coming out and neutralizing them with cross bodies on the outside. Scarlet gets involved, which brings out BFAB. Lashley locks in the hurt lock, but somehow AOP are the first of their feet after being taken out, whatever. And they sort of batter them for a bit, allowing Cross to hit the final prayer and the testament to stand tall. I, to be honest with you, I still have no idea what any of this is for. I understand why Bobby and the Prophets got together. And I, I actually really like them as a unit. I think it's, a, it's great for both of them. What are the final testament? Like, what are they? And what are they fighting for? And why, other than you steps to us, are the pride? pushing back. Do you know what I mean? I, I feel like I'm waiting for something to click and it hasn't yet. I think is the uh, the final testament is meant to represent Karrion Cross's dormant uh, presence on the main roster. Because mm. they Triple H has not done a great job of what's the word I'm looking for? He hasn't done a great job of of of, of you know when you you invest in something, you're kind of like I'm still waiting to find out where you invest in in this stock. I am mm. a Karen Cross apologist because he, him, like LA Knight, were guys I saw in Impact Wrestling, and I was like, these are WWE guys in the making. Mm. So for me, maybe it's the hair. People say it's the hair. He's not clicking on the main roster. That's because he's in the awkward. He he's in the awkward growing out phase. It's it no, he's in battle. Like, it, it's it's kind of on his clavicle. So it's, it's, yeah. nice, it's clever, you know. Right. You really are invested in carrying cross, Christ. <laughs> very, very precise, very precise. No, because I, I listen to the guy in the interview. He's very smart. I feel like if you and I ever talked to him, we would have a great time because he loves films like us. We have a great time talking to him. No, he's a guy that that's very much a, a professional. He could be a star, but he's not connecting. He's not clicking. So this final testament is him staking his claim on the main roster. He's taking credit for every heel turn that's happened after he's feuded with the wrestlers, which is great, which is a Bray White thing to do, embrace the hate or whatever. Um, that way was, that was to, rec to reclaim and make him like a, 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 a I would say a savant, a diabolical cerebral kind of person. Uh, Final Testament is about staking claims. Bobby Lashley is a guy that is a former world champion. He's the prototypical what a main eventer is. So he sees uh, Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits as stepping stones. They're kind of mm. like the golden childs of the 
pandemic, you know, Thunderdome era, whatever. So this is like their step up to the mountain. As much as I want Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits to win, I want them to. But you do, you'll be doing a disservice of the Final Testament if they don't win. Final Testament needs mm -hmm. to win. As much as, I, as much as they're still not clicking, because it's, it's, it's like yeah. you're saying, because the issue is, why is Karen Cross not in Elimination Chamber? Why is he not having more prominent spots? How they... As they force the fans' hands, you might get a much better uh, outcome. It's just that he's he's an afterthought, and they're trying to mm. change that to answer your, my long-winded answer to your question. <laughs> no, I mean, and afterthought is exactly what I feel, and that's that's frustrating because I I mean I saw someone in the chat say we need tag titles back on SmackDown. I'm a hundred percent on that. Like you split the titles back up and have something for them to actually physically fight over would be would be great personally. But you know they're cracking on and. Uh, all respect to them for that. We go backstage, we have Dragon Lee. Uh, we got a recap of last week's LWO Legada shenanigans and Dragon Lee's just on the phone. Uh, Legada del Fantasma walk up and they're sort of incredulous at the idea that he might be the future uh, next Rey Mysterio. They think that's nonsense. They push him to the ground. We have a match coming up later on. Tiffany Stratton, uh, meanwhile, comes out. It is a big pop for her. We love Tiffy time. It's all Stratton in the early going. She's taking on Meechin. Every time Meechin even gets a sniff of a comeback, Stratton reasserts control. The announcers are sort of putting over that Meechin is off her game because she's dealing with the OC situation. Um, and Tiff counters, uh, I, I think, an attempt for a style clash with a, a hard Alabama slam and hits the prettiest moonsault in the game. And honestly, good Lord, it connected perfectly. It was a beautiful moonsault. One, two, three. Tiffany gets the win, continues her momentum. She's, I think she's two and three on hitting that PME because the, yeah. the first the first three times it was like she whiffed it and the second time she needed it the third mm -hmm. time was whatever and even this match I like the fact that you can tell that she's improving she she finally found her footing the third time and then she hit it great she's yeah. Tiffany Stratton I have a special affinity for her because me and SB3 we saw her blossom on NXT yeah. 2.0 yeah she you know she was a cookie cutter yeah, yeah, yeah. It was she your was show she was your she was your guy yeah, she, she, I say it's like one of my people, it's like it's one of my girls, she's mm. grown up. And I, I find it fascinating because I, I attribute her dating Ludwig Kaiser to why she's now a great phenomenal wrestler in the ring because her, she hits hard. She hits mm. hard and she's crisp in the ring. And even like the, the, the back, the back spring, the, the back spring elbow that she does in the oh corner, my God. right? China was the first person I ever saw do that. And when she when time to yeah. do it, it used to be like it used to be like a little bump in the corner. But when Tiffany does it, she hits you with the elbow because even um Dana Brooke, who's now you know mm. Ash by Elegance, Ash in by Elegance, yeah. She used to do it, she used to do it too. But I think what makes Tiffany's one impressive is the amount of backflips she does. It because when China mm. did it, it was like one backflip bump. Uh when Dana did it one, maybe two, but Tiffany just one, two, three, bam. Yeah, I'm a look. I'm a China guy. China was my first favorite wrestler. I love her. She, she, and, and everything. I'll never. There's never enough energy in the world for giving China props. But I, every time I watch Tiffany hit that move, it makes me think of China. And and you're exactly right. She hits it that little bit harder, and it's just a lovely, a lovely thing. I think Tiffany is someone who already within seconds has shown that if you're called up and you're used right. That's it. Like you are uh, strap the rocket to Tiffany. Love it. There's so this women's division is is kind of incredible. And I will like I, I like Meechin a lot as well. I think Meechin's actually had some great showings recently. And I would love to see I'd love to see more from all of them. I'd like to see them give them more time. I'd like to see them not just shoved on main event and see what happens. I say this every time, but yeah. Um AJ Styles think, backstage. Just, sorry, just to quickly say okay. about Meechin. Uh Meechin, I think she needs a a character reset. I think her character mm. probably works against her because, you, you, like you said, it. you say Michin is a good wrestler, but her issue is she's an afterthought as well because she doesn't get really get opportunities. Yeah. Someone mentioned there how she had a handful of ma matches last year, which she's kind mm. of nearly approved upon this year. She just, uh, like, what is her character? I think that's what it is. I think they haven't really established yeah. the HBIC because she's the HBIC, right? That's what they call her, the head... Head, head bitch in charge, head baddie in charge is what it is. Yeah, that's it. I'm about to say because that, that was that was like Victoria's old nickname back in the days. So yeah, if you know, I um, remember. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> HBIC. Um, yeah, we, they haven't really established who she is. Is like mm -hmm. it was great. She, she was she was brought like kind of in the B fab role of neutralizing the, yeah. the other groups. Uh, you know, Rhea Ripley. Yeah, yeah. 
but they haven't done much with to, to make because fans you can tell the fans don't really care. And you got someone like Tiffany Stratton who's barely been on 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 SmackDown for like a month already mm-hmm. over. Dallas loved her like she's one of their mm-hmm. own because they've done a great job of building her up. You know, you know, the, with the Becky feud, the the great performance of the Royal Rumble, and then you know, Elimination Chamber. She, she's made. Don't turn a baby face, please. She, she's getting no. positive reactions, but she's great as a heel. Uh, Meechin either establish who she is as a character or give her a new character. Just, she needs something. Yeah, she hasn't really had any, I mean, it was over two years ago now, she was brought in essentially just to be the chick who rolls with the OC. Uh, and she absolutely needs something else on top of that. Uh, speaking of the OC, we do cut back to AJ Styles backstage, who says, um, basically, he's just explaining why he was in the Elimination Chamber, why he flew all that way. And it was because he watched LA Knight walk around as if he owned the place, but didn't deserve to share a locker room with AJ Styles. He thought the shtick was funny until Knight took an opportunity at Styles' expense. Says Knight's overachieving, under-talented, loudmouth, desperately in need of humbling, and he is a phenomenal choice to do just that. We cut backstage to LA Knight. This is now two people who have watched a monitor in the correct way, not standing sideways. Both Naomi and LA Knight were watching television like a human being. Mm -hmm. Um, And Knight then does not behave like a human being and instead decides to take it out on the TV uh, by battering the TV with a chair. The TV, in this case, a proxy for AJ Styles, basically saying, like, you did this to me, I will do this to you the next time I get your hands, my hands on you because you were a coward for not coming to the arena, kind of thing. I, I, um, want, I want TV versus Alien Knight at WrestleMania now. I'm sorry, AJ. I think the feud <laughs> has been established. The TV got walloping. The TV needs to, needs to get his revenge. Either that Absolutely. or TV... Either that, Dan, or we have AJ Styles versus Alien Knight on a TV on the pole match. I mean, I think you just sold me on it. Like, this feud was was entertaining enough as it was, but the second you hang something off a pole, I'm in. Um, or just putting him in the multi-vitamin ladder match that I've been calling it. Yeah, just what, put him in the one of those two. Match. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of people and TVs, we go backstage to the New Catch Republic who are, well... Tyler Bate is playing 2K24 and he's being incredibly brummy about it. Uh, but Pete Dunn isn't impressed, so Bate is chastened, goes off to talk to Aldis about the tag title scene. When he leaves, Pete Dunn plays uh, 2K24. This was far less offensive to my senses than the one on Raw. So I was fine with it. Um, but there you go. Bit of a promo for 2K24. Not a lot to read into. Uh, we get to Dragon Lee versus uh, Angel Garcia. Uh, Angel Garza, that's it. Yeah, well, who's Angel Garcia? Someone else. No, Angel, um, Angel Garza, yeah. Just Angel. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, Dragon Lee gets straight to work. Oh, his entrance is so sick with the giant screen and that that dragon as well. I love it. But he gets to work hammering in on the corner. This, for me, is a proper SmackDown match. Do you know what I mean? It's like a hard-hitting, athletic, cruiserweight 2003 SmackDown situation. And I, Bingo. SmackDown was my show when I was a kid, so I adore it for that reason. Uh, ultimately, Dragon Lee gets the win, but Phantasma get in the ring and do a beatdown. Santos is screaming down lens that this is Ray's fault. And Wade Barrett points out the LWO aren't in the arena to help out. This is this... I think you're right. It's going to lead to a big sort of blowout at night one or night two, maybe even both tag match on one night, solo Ray and Santos on the other. I'm really into this from all of them. Uh, where has Dragon Lee been? Because there, there was a point in SmackDown where you had a Dragon Lee match every week and mm-hmm. that was at the center point of, of SmackDown and I missed it. And seeing this match kind of reconfirmed that this show needed this match. It was a good match. But unfortunately, the presentation of Dragon Lee since he's been back is a bit baffling because he got geeked out backstage. And I, and I understand that they need to get heat. So they beat, they beat mm-hmm. him up. So I have no issue with it because he won the match. So I can't cry about everything. But it's just that the, the, the risk of turning him into a geek, and that's what I don't want for him. Because when he first burst mm-hmm. into the scene, he was like a tornado of, of fire and fury. And just don't neuter him because yeah. public perception slightly if you just hinder someone slightly it can just always change on them so I, I hope that he gets his revenge because also there's more members because he's now an affiliate of lwo so there's more members mm-hmm. than lwo and his own legado so will it be a case of like ray carlito and dragon lee because the other two no offense to you know to joaquin and cruz they're kind of like the b team that lose a lot so i want to yeah. see at wrestlemania carlito Ray and Dragon Lee against Legado del Fantasma. But yeah, it, it was it was a good match. And, you know, they, they're keeping the flame of the match going. I'm assuming, you know, Ray is away because his son got married. So he's probably there. I don't know about the others, what the excuse is. Maybe he's like, if Ray's not there, we can't be there. But yes, yeah. that's why Ray wasn't there. Dominic got married. Dom, Dom. 
Good for him. Um, we go back to damage control backstage. Dakota saying that uh, she's always been the brains of the operation. They say that um, Bailey was easy to manipulate and she should have seen it coming. It's always been EO's era, her vision from day one. And we're going to have a match between Dakota and Bailey next week. A lot of this promo obviously cut in Japanese with the subtitles, which is something that I love. Let them do what they do. Don't, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I, I, him. I love damage control. I love their aesthetic. I think. The, the different qualities that EO brings, that Asuka brings, that Kyrie brings, and it all merges together. And then Dakota is this kind of like, you know, I, I guess mouthpiece, but they don't need her if they're going to do it like this as a mouthpiece. So she gets to exist on her own. I loved this. I loved it all. And I am excited for where this is going to go. This is why I feel like over the next few weeks, there's time for damage control to heat back up a little bit. Um, and I do hope, you know, if you make a noise about it online, I hope they'll listen to it. Um, and that's really the, the end of the show um because then we go into our main event segment so uh overall i i like smackdown a lot this week um i think uh the the key talking point is the main event but yeah it was a great show yeah it, it was a good show i can't really complain match uh, complain much uh you know tiffany stratton's the new hot young star they're presenting the women's division she's doing well we've got the nuggets between the nugget of 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 storyline seed between naomi and, and bianca uh, I'm going to mention it, Jade Cargill, what's going on there? I'm kind of worried now because I was hoping they were going to make her in-ring debut at WrestleMania. I, I was even uh, fan, 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 fan booking, fantasy booking, uh, Nia Jax versus, uh, uh, you know, Jade Cargill for a debut. Yeah. But it's like, then we saw, you know, Damage Control have an issue with Jade Cargill. So I don't know what's going to happen. Is it going to be Naomi and Jade Cargill offsetting, mm. you know, the onslaught of, of um, Damage Control? I, I don't know. So hopefully we, we get answers to the questions I just posed. Um, yeah, for me, it, it, was, it was a good show. It wasn't great. It was good. Uh, the main event kind of like basically uh, carried the entire show. But we had mm -hmm. some good in-ring matches. Both shows are in state of flux because you've got wrestlers all trying to figure out where their placement is on the card. You've got like the new Catch Republic saying, you know, we need we need to get the tag titles, you know. Mm. And then then you've got uh, on Raw on your on your side, you've got Natty and and and, and everyone else saying, hey, we need to get the women's tag titles. So mm -hmm. is the, everyone's jockeying for position. I'm hoping by next week we start to know what is the card because yeah. we don't have the match card at the moment. It's worth it's worth remembering, and I have I basically just rewatched all of the build to WrestleMania 17, and a lot of the matches don't actually get put in place. TLC doesn't get put in place until two weeks before. K uh, Angle Benoit Benoit is in a feud with Guerrero, and that doesn't get put in place. There's a lot of stuff that can happen in the next four weeks, so there's there's a lot of time. Um, keep your eyes peeled. I I think. I think it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be interesting the way it plays out. Um, we'll we'll finish off with our other chats over here. Uh, we've got Hassan who says, uh, is anyone else getting a bit annoyed with The Rock using cross-dressing as a slur? It was Roman who used cross-dressing. Uh, speaking, if I can just very quickly on behalf of uh, the, yeah, go go the entire queer community, um, I, I do find stuff like that lazy. I recognize that um, uh, heels need to be heels and say things that make you angry at them. I just wish they'd be a little bit smarter with it. Personally, that feels like a cheap hit. Um, but you know, uh, yeah, it, it's a complicated one. I, I wasn't really sure how I felt about it in the moment. I, I get what Roman's doing. It makes me angry at Roman, but I just wish that they'd be smarter with it. If that makes sense. Um, I, I'm with you. I, I want to say something very, very, very quickly. Uh, yes, it was very lazy. And also I think what, what they're doing is they're struggling on how to describe Seth Rollins. Heck the default walking clown emoji you know they want to yeah. say something more yeah. because i feel like seth's outfit and his character is too nuanced for a single slur so they're trying mm. their best cross-dressing is lazy because he he doesn't cross-dress that's not where it is no uh yes no. but they're trying to figure out what to call him they're trying to figure out what is a, a great derogative term for him and is it, they don't have one yeah, and then and, uh, this is what I mean. I think they're better than it. I just I've always mm. thought they're better than making yeah. digs about, you know, his wife or his clothes. I'm like, well, get. I I actually prefer clown emoji because at the very least it feels like they're going for the idea of him being a clown, um, yes. like get serious. And then in this moment he did get serious, and I appreciate that. Uh, we've got Loby Warsaw who says when the Rock made his entrance, it was the first time I thought, oh, it's the Rock. I'm only 22 and I missed the Rock's best years. I only saw 2010's Rock live, but for the first time I felt the aura and I get it. I mean, yeah. You know what the aura is like. You've been around a lot as long as I have. It's cooking. That's what it was. Yeah. The aura, that, 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 that's the yeah. thing to say. He's cooking. That, when people say, why is he cooking? His aura. Uh, we've got Tracy WV88 has been a member for six months in a row. A member. So congratulations, Tracy. Hello, boys. 
Not sure why Seth gets so much hate. He's a fantastic wrestler. Maybe I'm in the minority, but Seth adds something unexpected. He's a wild card. What do you think, Dan? Um, yeah, I, I I like what he does. I just think in uh, for a large part of the year, it's felt a bit... I don't know, it's not been exciting. His music hits and I'm like, oh, this segment, we'll get through it. And I don't think that's his fault because I know, because yeah. like we've seen it in this episode, we've seen it when he was a heel. He does so much incredible work. I think it's the material he's been given that's made me feel underwhelmed by him. Mm -hmm. It's not his fault. Yeah. It's the it's the company's booking of him has been the issue. Yeah, I agree. But yeah. Uh, Vandela 1998 has been a member. It's become a member. Thank you so much for joining the members. Do you think Drew is going to get involved with the tag team issue? Because he definitely wants revenge on the bloodline, but also wants Seth's title. For me, I feel like he's kind of moved away from it, personally. I feel like he's happy to use the bloodline's interference. If anything, he's he's telling Seth, don't get distracted by the bloodline. So it makes more sense for him to be away from it and then mm -hmm. use that as a sort of, um, what's the word? Chip on his shoulder, in a way. He even said it. He goes, um, I don't want him to interfere in my match, so I am cool. I don't care anymore. I've got a title match. That's what he said. He's like, mm. this is my yeah. time. We've got Sammy Boy donated $5 saying, personally, if the Rock and Roman don't have a tribal meeting in ring or via pre-taped gathering, this whole story is a flop. All the bloodline talk has to be paid off. Also, I need to know, is the family behind the two douches? <laughs> I was saying to know if he's the family of the two douches, or is Jay the chief of the North? I appreciate I the Game of Thrones reference <laughs> very yes, much. Yes, yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, what do you think, Dan? Um, do you think do you want yeah, to see I, more? Do you want to see like I would Rikishi, you know, Arthur and Seeker, yeah. and then all the other family members? Well, we had Arthur and Seeker um, very early on in the Bloodline story. I mm -hmm. think if you have them, and if they're going to be around for WrestleMania week it's a shame not to use them. I think it would be a great opportunity to have... Do you remember we were going to get the tribal... What was the ceremony that turned into the trial of Sami Zayn? Do you know what I mean? We were going to have something, like an acknowledgement ceremony or something like yeah, that. The, yeah, it's tribal ceremony. Yeah, yeah. I'd like, like that, something yeah. like that. I think it would be a wasted opportunity. If we are in... Not to overdo it on the, Mo the Marvel stuff, but if we're in the end game of the Bloodline with the championship storyline, because I think there is legs with Bloodline. If you take the championship off them, I think there's loads of legs legs in that mm -hmm. we're not even touched on solo and jay and all of those things i think it would be a shame to not get them in before or immediately after roman loses the belt do you know yeah i think uh definitely i feel like rikishi you might get rikishi because you know how close rikishi and rock are and you know yeah. we definitely need a rikishi appearance for this J jay and jimmy storyline because i feel like the only way this jay and jimmy storyline will start hitting more is you, if you start involving more real life family stuff into it so yeah, I'm hoping yeah. we get some sort of more uh, bloodline members in there just to, just to add more of the dynamic because Rock has given the bloodline a shot in the arm it needed. It's been stale since 2023. So you can argue that 2024 is already a better year for the bloodline storyline post Sami Zayn uh, saga. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I'm hoping, you know, fingers crossed. Okay, the um, next one. I, am I yeah. doing the next one? Yeah. The Black ahead, Prince. The Black Prince donated $10. I'm so in love with Dan's presenting style. He's flamboyant and accurate and informative, and he's a beautiful flower. <laughs> Personally, I'm not high on Seth. He's fine. I don't dislike him. I'm just of the mind that Jay should be teaming with Cody. Hashtag Cody Crybabies. See, it's good that I read that, by the way. It would have sounded Yeah, because otherwise I'd be doing myself up, yeah. Yeah, you be sure Michaels. I'm just a sexy boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd love that. That sounds great. But like, I to, to the point of the chat, I feel like you. It's your explanation of it. If you go go and listen to the show back later on, Zach gives a fantastic explanation of how important and integral Seth actually is to this tribal chief storyline, and and that's why you make. I I was of the mind, but five days ago, why isn't Jay involved? And you've kind of very brilliantly convinced me otherwise. So. Yay. Oh, the poll results. This is your time. Poll results. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I had my first ever poll that I've done. Uh, which is a better nickname? Is it Mr. Midlife Crisis or Diarrhea Dwayne? 82% of you have gone with Mr. Midlife Crisis. Thank you for that. I appreciate you. And I completely agree with you. We have Nikki the Nelson saying, long time listener, first time Ultra Shatter, was at the show last night. Loved seeing the crowd reaction for Tiffany Stratton. She has been amazing on the main roster and it was a was great last night. Hope her momentum continues. Hashtag Friday night Tiffy time. Couldn't agree more. What do we do with Tiffany at WrestleMania? Because I assumed um, 
based on the interaction, it may be Bianca versus Tiffany at WrestleMania, and you give Tiffany that moment of big, being mm -hmm. a big, credible star. But at the moment, they haven't really uh, interacted the past two weeks. So everything's in a state of flux of what they're going to do with Tiffany at WrestleMania. But I hope she gets a meaningful match on there. What, what do you so think? My problem with with it uh, is a good problem to have because you brought up Jade as well. Jade, I've watched Jade at the Royal Rumble about twenty six times. Oh, I love it. Everything from the way she held herself, the guitar. If I'm so glad they kept that theme. Like they didn't keep it. The... Okay, they didn't keep it. It's actually a new theme. It's a new. Uh, theme. It's, a, it's a, re a redone version of that theme. Oh, I know what you mean, but it's the same. I don't, you know, you know when you're like a, the nitpicker. I don't mean that Reddit guy, the guy on Reddit. I'm like, it's not the same theme. It's a different theme. It's it, similar. It's a similar it's, no, theme. No. I've, this is what I think happened. They've got, they've got the same musician who did her right. AEW theme to do the new mm -hmm. one. So I, I, I get what you're trying to say, as in they kept the same energy. Yeah, I think it's the same guy. They kept the they riff. Did. The guitar yeah. riff is the yeah. thing. They, they, That's they, what they, I'm I mean, after. if you got the original guitarist, obviously it's kind of like you're not plagiarizing if you got the original person that did the work yeah. to do the work. You know what I'm saying? So I yeah, think yeah, yeah. Eat, yeah. So I'm with it. I can't wait to hear the theme. Release it already, WWE music. I want yeah. to vibe to it. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. But I feel like the, the thing with they've got Jade and Tiffany, both of whom are on, I mean, Jade, Tiffany's on, on an incredible run. Jade has such aura and star power. I don't mm. want either of them to lose yet. I was glad that Jade wasn't put in the Elimination Chamber because I don't want her to lose full stop. Tiffany same, can take same. a couple of losses. I, I'd like the idea of Jade Bianca. If Bianca maybe goes on a bit of a, if, if she takes this Bailey thing and goes on a little bit of an edge, I don't want to say full heel turn because I think the comparisons to John Cena are fair with Bianca. I also just think she's incredibly important to have around the, what she does, what her presence is. Like, I don't mm. need to go on too much about it, but like, I think she's so special, but I love, I, oh my God, in the Royal Rumble, when Bianca and Jade stood off from each other. They can wrestle next mind. year because I feel like a match of, of this magnitude between these two superstars that have these kind of aura, you need to build up to it because mm. my argument is it will feel like you're kind of rushing to make it into a thing. I don't mind if, you know, Jade faces someone else and you build to it because by the time they wrestle each other next year, you're more excited because Jade would have a body of work that's built to this yeah. point because at the moment we're living off her past accomplishments in AEW, but we don't mm -hmm. know what kind of wrestler she is now. So I'd rather know the Jade now than the Jade that we know from AEW at the moment that we're booking, we want to book against Bianca. Yeah. And I also, uh, for me, you know, the, I'd, I'd let her debut at Raw After Mania and have her go on a run. You can maybe even do it at SummerSlam. I also hear all the calls for a women's mid-card title and you will never hear me fighting that call. Uh, will Chisholm has been a member for six months in a row and says, as much as NXT 2.0 was crazy, having Tiffany Stratton, Trick Williams, Carmelo Hayes, Bron Baker and Roxanne Perez, WWE has the next 15 years of stars. And I mean, that's it. Like NXT is there to build the new generation. And when you see the people coming through, I think it's safe to say that they've done a pretty good job with this class. It was a dark time. A few years ago, Austin Fury was considered the future of WWE, and I wanted to gag and throw up. So thankfully, <laughs> Bron Breaker's now in the main roster, because there was a certain guy that was considered the future, and he did a big no-no, and he's no longer around. So there was a void about the future of the company. And it was a dark time, because Austin Fury, he's not that guy. Will he, ever be, will, will he ever be ready? I don't know. But yes, I'm excited about the future of WWE. As a guy, I'm going to repeat again, who covered NXT 2.0. I know the great talents that's going to be coming up on the main roster. So yes. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we have a, a missed chat from the Dynamite Review. Moon Knight said, long time viewer, first time Omega Chatter. Was at the show last night. It was incredible. Will Ospreay is amazing. Hopefully we came across loud on TV because we sure as hell were in the arena. Anyways, much love. Uh, Monkeys Are Bananas says, hi guys, not a comment on the show here as I'll be honest, I didn't watch it, but I just wanted to say a huge thank you for everything you do and the incredible content you produce every day. Love all you guys and think you're all brilliant. Jam that jam. Thanks so much. I think we've done all right on yeah. our chaos yeah. show. Matt. Listen, listen, I, I, I knew I knew it would be great. I'm sorry, I knew, oh, yeah. I, knew, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I was like, listen, yeah. I was like, as long as Dan's got the login details and he got the control of things, I'm fine, let's do this. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm going to bash through a, a, a final few old chats here. Uh, we've got some spoiler alerts for a new uh, episode of a show. La, 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 la. Known. So um, congrats to Dan for the Survival Series performance, Grand Slam champion, or do you need a My GM season four to finish the Infinity Gauntlet? That was from Dana. Mm. And then Vandala1998 says, Dan, you're currently both a champion and Survival Series briefcase holder. Are you going for the WrestleTalk Triple Crown with the My GM mode championship as well? Look, it is my Infinity Gauntlet. It's it's my GM. And then I'll find you know a way to get Quizlemania. I've, I won the live Quizlemanias. They don't count, though, because they weren't on the internet. What? So, what? They don't? Yeah, what? The, the, 
this is what this is what I'm told by the powers that be. My my live Quizlemania victories at uh, our watch parties don't count, but whatever. Um, but hey, you might take the championship from me before I get to win the MyGM crown. So yeah, yeah, cool. Um, <laughs> Arc Teletri says, love the return of Sat E Day. Honestly, love both of you so much. Your positive attitude towards wrestling and just enjoying the product and trying to see the best in it. Wrestling is fun. Wrestling is great. Keep up the great work. Jam that jam. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Dante Kennedy's been a member for 11 months in a row. Have to catch the VOD as the NBA decided to F you fans and I couldn't stay up for SmackDown, but I had to stop in and say, welcome down and welcome back, Sat. Thank you so much, Dante. And finally, uh, Cooper Crest. Uh, donated $5. Hey, you guys, not SmackDown related, but I wanted to get your thoughts on Tony D'Angelo coming out of nowhere and challenging for the NXT title at Stand and Deliver. I, for one, think it's well-deserved. I love what he's done with the character and the family. Mod Mother, will you put the, the poll results in the document because I can't end it. Sat, what do you think of Tony D'Angelo? Funny, funny enough, a few weeks ago, I was thinking I was speaking to SB3. I said that um, at the moment, the crop of wrestlers that Tony D'Angelo came up with are all progressing, where I felt like he was stagnating. And all of a sudden, it's, it's like someone heard me talking, because all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, um, he's not in the tag team anymore. Uh, straight to the NXT title. I can't complain. And I like the fact that he flexed. Did you watch that clip of him? There was the contract signing and Carmelo Hayes had all this, his own security firm in the ring and the security firm was paid off by Tony D'Angelo because he slipped his finger and the security team left. Oh. Did you see it? Oh, yeah, love it, love it. Yeah, exactly. So that kind of, that kind of shows you the kind of character we could get on the main roster. I feel like Roman Reigns is a trial run for what a mob boss could look like on the main roster. Because mm. and, and, you know and like, it's so easy to do mm. mob bosses like a parody, but there's there's so and that's what NXT's for is to play with it to try the legit one, try the 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 kind of silly one. And that moment was just so it's it's cool, isn't it? You want a bit of cool in there and a bit of drama. Ah, yeah, I loved it. Um, all right, so we got the uh, overall SmackDown rating uh, thumbs up seventy two percent. So, uh, overall positive show, I think. Well done. And the overall positive rating for this show, I would say, is through the roof for, for yes, sat on Saturday. Yes, spread um, a word. We were great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thank you so much for, for this. I've had so much fun. Um, and thank you thank for you. Uh, being the best Wade Barrett that you could be while I figured out how to do this. Hey, um, you, you're the great Corey Graves. I mean, you know, you guys have got, you know, you got tattoos somewhere, right? Same I assume. with the, this business. The hair, exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, the, I, I think I should probably say the Saturday shows will be around for a little bit while longer. I think uh, this isn't, I'm not the decision maker, but um, in the lead up to Mania, I think the Saturday shows are going to still be around. So keep your eyes on the... Um, the schedule, I suppose. Keep your eyes on the on the on your subscription box. Subscribe to Wrestle Talk to be notif notified if that is the case. Give this stream a little like. Help us out in the algorithm and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, we'll see you again very very soon. I'll see you on Monday and then Tuesday. We've got the Raw review. We've got the the Dynamite review on Thursday, and then it, before you know it, it's Saturday all over again. So um, yeah, thanks, Sat. No, and thank, thank you, you guys for watch the show for goodness sake. Watch it, you know, let the views go up. Remember, if the view goes down, I am gone. I'm gonna disappear like a genie. I'm gonna go back this into the it. bottle again. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, we'll see you very soon. Let me just see if this button works and bye bye. Well,